Hey guys, thanks for joining and welcome to our 80th video on ProjectOiler.net. Today we're going to be taking a look at problem number 80, square root digital expansion. The problem reads, it is well known that if the square root of a natural number is not an integer, then it is irrational. The decimal expansion of such square roots is infinite without any repeating pattern at all. The square root of 2 is the number given here. And the digital sum of the first 100 decimal digits is 475. For the first 100 natural numbers, find the total of the digital sums of the first 100 decimal digits for all the irrational square roots. So thinking about how we can implement a solution for this, it looks like there's some overlap between what we did on previous videos. The approach I have in mind right now is to 1. Convert the square root into a continued fraction. Two is we can roll up that fraction up to some arbitrary limit, like 100, 200, for example, so that we have a fraction with a large numerator and a large denominator to get us a very close approximation of the square root. So we need the first 100 digits to be accurate, and then after that it doesn't matter. Then from there, the last part we can do is divide the fraction out, actually get the digits and sum them up. So let's go over to our workspace, create a code file, and get started with that implementation. I'm going to be coding this in TypeScript, if you're not familiar with that language. It is a superset of JavaScript, and the syntax is similar to most common programming languages, so you should have no troubles following along in this video. I'm going to be using a class for this, which is not required per se. I just want to leverage some utilities which I've written to run the program. So first, let's quickly make a method do solve. We'll separate that out of solve so that we can do any debugging here if we need to. And here we'll actually do the main logic of the program. So first, let's think about how we want to generate the continued fraction. This is something we've done in previous videos, so we're going to take a similar approach here. I'm going to make a method get sequence for n. And the first term will be, or the start term, the initial condition will be the floor of the square root. So we'll pass that in directly. And we'll work with big ints just because of how large these ratios are going to get. And we're going to return an array of i sequence items. So we have to go up here and define that quickly. of the a term, which is a big int, the a term being the whole number part of that continued fraction. And the remainder will just be the numerator denominator. So we'll define a sequence. And something we'll do here, this is a little different than how we did it before. We're going to make a set to keep track of sequence hits. So in that way, when we find a duplicate, or we find the beginning of a repeated pattern again, we can return. Before we used a sorted list, but using a set here will actually be a lot faster, so we're gonna go with that approach. I'm not gonna cover too much of this algorithm in this video. If you're curious about that, you can check out our previous videos on continued fractions. I think this is around problem 64, 65, and I'll go into a lot more detail there on how this algorithm actually works. Okay, so here we have this part of the algorithm. This will calculate the next term item. As the key, we're just gonna have the a term and then the remainder joined. So it'll be three comma separated values basically. Then if the sequence has this already, we know that we've found our loop. So we'll return the sequence, otherwise we'll push it and add it to the key. The second part, we need to roll up the fraction. So let's make a method for that. And we'll return a big int fraction here. So this is also covered in previous videos. I won't go into too much details here, but same thing around problem 64, 65, we do this. Basically this just keeps dividing out the fraction and it goes through the repetition as well. It keeps dividing it out until we get to the level we want. So I'm gonna run this for uh, roughly 200 iterations, I think is a good value. We need to make sure that we have the first 100 decimals totally accurate. So I'm going to run this 200 times just to have that margin of error accounted for. So now we have that logic in place. This just keeps repeating the division until we're done. The last thing we need to do is actually divide out the numerator denominator. And we're going to use a long division type approach for that. Then once we divide that out, we can sum up the digits and return the value. We'll call this one divide sum digits. And we'll return a big int here, even though it won't be a big int to the sum of the digits. But that's fine, we can just keep it consistent. And 
the approach we're going to take here, we're going to keep modifying the fraction, essentially, until we're done looping. So we're going to do this 100 times. We're considering the first digit here as well. This factors into the digits we're adding up to 475 in this example. So the first digit will be that floor square root, and then we'll iterate 99 more times over the actual fraction that we got in order to perform the division. So this will almost exactly follow how long division works, where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, or you can imagine that we have the numerator, or the denominator here, the numerator here with the box. So the first part, you have to multiply it by 10, which is coming up here, and then figure out what to subtract that new thing by, get the difference, keep repeating that. So that's basically what we're going to do here. The actual digit will be the new 10 number divided by the denominator. And this is integer division. Add that to the digit sum. Get the difference. Then we're actually going to make the working fraction itself that. So the denominator will be the same throughout. The numerator is what will change, and we're going to change the numerator to that difference. So in other words, that value we get when we make the subtraction. Then lastly, we return digit sum. So if we quickly ran this on the number 2, there's one more step that we have to do. We have to just make one function to coordinate all of that. So we'll call that get sum for n. We also have to make sure if it's a perfect square, we'll just return 0. And since this is integer division here, we have to multiply it back. And if it's the same, that means we have a perfect square, we return 0. Otherwise, we continue on. So first, we can just update that. Then we just need to get the sequence. Get the fraction. And then return the digit sum. Okay, now we should be able to run this. And we get 475, so that's good. So the last part we need to do is just iterate over the numbers from 1 to 100, collect the sums, and we're done. Let's make that a big int. Okay, it looks like we have some minor issue here. Okay, I just found the error. We need to make that on this line 2n, not just n. It was actually taking the variable. I meant to just say big into there. So let's run that again. 40886. Let's see if that's correct. Okay, that is correct. And it took 921 milliseconds, which is decent performance. Let's see if we can tweak this a little bit and make it a little bit faster. I'm just reducing the number of times you have to roll it up to maybe make it a little bit faster. Okay. So setting that to 180, we have the same answer, 743 milliseconds. If we set it to 160, we're just doing a little bit of a trial and error thing here. So yeah, we can keep that at 180, and we're about three quarters of a second. So I'm satisfied with the implementation that we have here. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications for more project or other videos. I'm going to keep posting these till we have 100 videos published, 100 problems solved. Thanks for watching.